Hi everyone, it's Carrie. So I just want to show off a Python script that I wrote yesterday that should make one step of the video making process easier for me. For context, watch this video that I made five months ago, specifically this portion right here. Now in this case, I've already manually edited that audio. You can use my jump cutter tool from last year to automate this step, but to be honest, audio editing is only 5% of my workflow, so I didn't mind just doing it myself. If you Okay, so I, I claimed that audio editing is only 5% of the total time it takes to make a video, and that might or might not be true, but basically that's still a percentage that it would be nice to get rid of. So the script that I wrote, which is right here, I'm not going to put it online yet unless there's like enough demand because this is just a, I wrote this in maybe three or four hours. So it's really not a full fledged piece of software. It's really just something I hacked together as quickly as possible to get this concept to work. Basically what happens is say you have a script for a video. This is what I'm going to use as my example, by the way, let me move my little window down here so you can see the whole thing. Um, so you got a script. And whenever I record audio for a video, I always say the lines and mess them up multiple times. So then I'll say it again and again, but then I run, I make my way through the whole script. And then once I'm done with that in audacity or something, then I will have to listen through it all again and then cut out the bad takes. And almost always, I really just want to keep the last take because the last take is usually the one that I'm the most satisfied with because that's why I would move on to the next line after that. You know what I mean? Basically, I think the audio editing process um, is very formulaic, repetitive, and boring. And there's not much creative expression in the process. So I really don't think humans should get super involved in it. So my plan was just write some code that allows me to record a script. And it should also allow me to mess up, say when I mess up, and also say when I succeed and get a final audio file at, out the other end with all the mess ups removed so that I never have to go into Audacity and edit the audio myself. Basically, it's one pass editing. Um, you know, like once you write your script, you only have to read through it once or even listen through it once and you're done. So let me show you how that works. Um, so here's the command prompt. I'm sure you all know what it is and my my code is just aae.py. That might be kind of small and hard for you to see, but let's just get started. So when I hit enter and I run the code, I'm using Pygame to generate this little window. So like, again, I wrote this in three or four hours, so the graphics aren't that great, but basically in the upper left, I have lines being written. Oh shoot, it says goodbye at the top. That's an error. Let me fix that. Okay, let me just put some empty space down here just to fill up space so I don't get the error. And also I'm going to delete the audio it outputted. Yeah, bye. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's recording me right now, which is why you can see this audio form, you know, this wave file being drawn to the screen. And I'm supposed to be reading this middle line here. See, this one's in black and the ones above and below are in gray. So I should be focused on the one in black, but if I ever mess up or I say the wrong line, I can press the down arrow key to essentially trash that take. So if I press down, that whole wave form that, you know, showed the last 15 seconds of me talking, it's gone and it allows me to start with a clean slate. So what I should do if I wanted to actually record the script here, I would hit down again and then I would say, this is an example script. Now I press the right arrow key when I'm satisfied with it. And that means I can move on to the next line. Um, but like, let's say I read this one here, like, I, okay. So you can see this, the second line I say, I found a list of various tang, tung, twang, turn. Oops. I messed up. I don't want that to be in my final file. Then I hit down and it gets trashed. I found a list of various tongue twisters from a Google search. Peter Piper picked a peck of poop. Oops, I messed up. I'll press down. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Good. Oh, I said good. So that means it's actually bad. So I have to redo it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 
How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck? Well, let's say I accidentally keep that bad take and I press right. Well, then I can actually go backward by pressing left. And if you see the rectangles at the top, there's the blue ones and the yellow ones. If I press left, then you can see I go back to the fourth session. And now I'm recording the woodchuck line again. And I can press down to like take a new take again. How much wood... I, messed, I actually legit messed up there. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? She sells seashells by the seashore. Carrie poo poo pee pee ha ha doy. Goodbye. Now when I'm done for real, like whenever in the script, like if I ever just want to say I'm done with this recording, I just press the space bar and that will exit out of the whole um, GUI, you know, the little user interface. That's all run with Pygame. So when I press spacebar, it exits Pygame, and then it will use FFmpeg to stitch all those WAV files together. Now what it also does... Okay, actually, I gotta go through things one step at a time. So, um, the first thing I should just show you is the final audio file, which is example output dot wave, which is what my program just outputted. So if I listen to that, this is an example script. I found a list of various tongue twisters from a Google search. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? She sells seashells by the seashore. Carrie poo poo pee pee ha ha doy. Goodbye. So you can see that it only kept the good takes, right? Um, so that's really helpful because you know, this is a 19 second outputted file, but maybe it took me a couple minutes to get through the whole thing because I messed up. So it really helps crunch down that length of the wave file to keep only the good stuff. So now I don't have to do anything. I don't have to open it up in Audacity. I can just use this in my actual video. The other thing I wanted to point out, which isn't quite as impressive, but is also super fundamental and all that. Let me just like change the file name here so that it doesn't overwrite itself. Um, you may have noticed that parts of this waveform, you know, on the GUI, show up as red. And it's doing the same jump cutter thing where it's splitting the audio up into a bunch of chunks. And if a chunk has silence in it, meaning that the all the values of the wave file are like within a very small threshold range, then it's not going to be saved in the final WAV file. What that means is, even for your good takes, you're allowed to stay silent for as long as you need to sort of collect your thoughts, figure out what you want to say, prepare, and that will all be removed from the final WAV file. And this is really helpful because I feel like so much of audio editing is just finding the parts where people are not talking for like five seconds and then cutting that out. And it feels super repetitive as well. And there's not much creative expression there, except for maybe if you're doing stand up comedy and you're trying to figure out the right timing for a joke to land. That's the only time I think you could actually obsess over, you know, should I delay 0.7 seconds or 0.8 seconds of silence? Other than that, I really think that no one actually cares. So. That, you know, removing the red sections is just another way of automating a process that I used to do manually myself and it felt super repetitive. Yeah, actually, let me just hit space and um, that whole file will be just me just talking now, but it won't be the script itself. You may have noticed that parts of this waveform. Yeah, that's me. So, yeah, I did that. Um, so like I've actually already been using this tool today to record part of my next video and it helps a lot especially if you're working on a video that's longer so it's more of a video essay where the you know the exact I guess flow or cadence of the speech isn't as important as just getting through all that content quickly essentially this is sort of a way of getting a lot of quantity up to a, like a minimal level of quality so that it's good. So if you're making hour long videos or like 30 minute long video essays, I think this could be quite useful. Also, I do want to say that there are probably tools out there that already exist online that do this. And I didn't bother searching because 
um, you know, I didn't want to get messy with other people's software and maybe I'd have to pay for it or create accounts or figure out if it works on Windows 10. If I just write it myself, again, it's only going to take a few hours. And also I own everything uh, in here, so I don't have to worry about stealing people's stuff. Although I do have to admit a lot of this code is copied from Stack Overflow and stuff, but you know, that's how programmers all work. And I do have to say that if nothing else, this was a good experience for me to learn how to use Python um, to take in audio streams. Like I feel like that's a concept that I've never really experimented with. So you can see the, the Pi audio stream here. Um, and I'm, I've just acquired like the smallest smidgen of experience with Python and audio streams. So every project, even if it's not successful is a learning experience. So that's good. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share this. I, I don't think that this tool is interesting enough to warrant a carry KH video. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I feel like it's, it's a kind of a tier less impressive than jump cutter was. Um, yeah, but I don't know, maybe I'll make a video about it later. That's, I guess, better structured than this, which is just sort of, uh, me talking to a camera with no editing for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. So if you're interested in programming, this was your little carry KH programming video of the day. I don't really know. Bye. Oh yeah. I'll, I, the other thing I just want to say is that I could just put this online, make it open source ASAP. Um, yeah, but not right now because I don't think this code is like worthy of that. It's just, I wrote it so quickly. It's not worth it. Okay. Bye.